Hey, welcome back to the edit room. I'm John Ballou. Today we're going to look at how to key green screen footage inside Final Cut 10. We'll be using the Final Cut 10 keyer, as well as a basic color correction, a Gaussian blur for blurring out the background of the shot that we're going to replace the green screen with, and we'll use an adjustment layer and the Lights and Shadows plugin that you can find on my website. In fact, both of these are on my website. If you go to johnballou.com and just click on plugins, you'll be able to download them. Okay, so here I have a green screen shot. It wasn't shot too well. I've got it, you know, poorly lit on a green wall, basically. And this is the background that I'm going to replace it with. This is what it looks like with just the keyer, and this is where we're headed. Um, I'm going to be putting the lights on just her. And then I'll put a few lights on the background, and then a Kukaloris or a cookie. Um, and in fact, you can download some more cookies if you go to my website. And this is what it looks like when you download them. You can just drag the package from uh, here over to the desktop. Or in this case, I'm just going to drag it straight to my Final Cut library. I created one called Cookies, and I can just drop it in there. And now you can see them all. Lots of cool little designs in here. Um, I'm going to go to the black, and in fact, if I click on the package, that's the folder with all of them. And the, the white is the same as the black, essentially, so you can see the names of them. Um, so there's white and black, mostly because you can see what they look like, but uh, we'll just go from here. Um, so that's how you could install all these cookies that we can use here in a minute. Um, in fact, you know, this is all of them. <laughs> so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this green screen shot that has no filters on it, and I'll bring it up to what uh, I had a minute ago. So uh, with the top clip selected, um, I'm going to go over here to the Effects Browser, and I'll go to Keying, and I'll just drag in the keyer. Okay, so that worked pretty well, but I want to see more of what I'm keying. So I'm going to turn off the background layer here by hitting the letter V. And as you can tell, the key didn't work out too well. So um, with the top uh, clip selected, I'll go to the keyer in the inspector. And by the way, if you hit Command-4, it opens the inspector in case you didn't know that. Um, so under the keyer, I'm going to open this up. And this is the button that you click first to select more of the color that you want to key out. So I'll just click and drag maybe over here on the edge. And then the edges, this is just to help with that thin line. You can see that line going around the edge of her shirt there. I'll just click on the outside. So basically the blue area is uh, designating what's outside the key and what's inside the key. So I can drag this little slider back and forth until I'm happy with that edge, which is right about there. So you can see that edge is nice and uh, refined. There's no white. Um, but she's become see-through. In fact, if I change my view here to this middle one, you could see how see-through she's become. So I need to fill the holes. And by dragging the slider up just, just a little bit, you can see the holes being filled, which means that um, she's no longer opaque. So you won't be able to see through her at this point. So I'll switch my view back to this first one. And I have a pretty decent key. Um, I want to apply the color correction, so I'll hit Command-6. And I'll go to the exposure and just kind of drag that up a little bit. But as you can see, it's making her a lot brighter. And this is the mid-tones, and this is the darks. So I'm not really happy with that look. I'm going to undo that. And maybe I'll just take the midtones up a little bit. No, too far. Take the brights, make her a little bit brighter, and take this down. So I'm not really getting the results I want. If I click the background and hit V to turn the background back on, you could see she's keyed out, and it's okay, but it just seems really flat. So what I'm going to do, let me turn the background off again, and I'll just select her. I'll go to the filters and here's the lights and shadows filter. I'll just grab some light bulbs and drag and drop that on. So this first light bulb here is kind of the fill or what I would use for the fill light. And if you drag the uh, circle on the outside here, 
it's making the shadow bigger and not bigger. So if you think of the circle as affecting the shadow part instead of affecting the light part, then it's not backwards for you. If you think of it the other way, then it's going to be pretty backwards. But this light is just so cool. I just love how I can click and drag and move it around. So, um, like I said, I want it to be more of a fill light, so I'll put it right there. And then back in the inspector, I'll go to my light bulbs that I've just added, and I'll turn on light number two. So by turning on light number two, that's this light up at the top here. And if you can't see these lights, you'll want to go to the um, percentage and maybe drop the percentage a little lower so you can see them. I'll go back to 100% for now. So I turned on light number two. This is three, four, five, six. I'll just drag that in, and maybe I want this light to kind of light up her shoulder right here. And under light two, I can make the, int the intensity a lot brighter. Uh, you know, you can change the color of it, you know, in case you, it just depends on the light source that's around her. The goal here is to match what's behind her and make her really look like she's in the room. Um, I'm, I can click this and reset that. And maybe the fall off, maybe I want to, you can see the fall off is, you know, oops, I'm going to undo that. The fall off is how far the light is reaching. And then the fall off start helps that as well. So it's just kind of tweaking both things. And the cone angle is how big the light is. Um, in fact, if I take the soft edge all the way down to zero, you can see what this light's doing. So the cone angle, if I go up, that's how big the light is. And then the soft edge is basically feathering out the light. And you can do you know, basically whatever you want to do. In this case, I'm just going to do a nice little light on her shoulder here. And then I'll scroll down to light number three. I'll turn that on. And maybe this is this shoulder. And I want to create a nice little rim light there. So I'll take the soft edge down. And now you can see I've got a nice little blue light on her shoulder here. Maybe there's a blue light in the background that's casting on there. Or maybe not. I'm going to turn this back to white and go from there. And then maybe light number four could be for the top of her head. Maybe right about there. Okay, now let's turn the background back on. And now you can see that she's pretty well lit, but the background doesn't match her at all. <laughs> so I'm going to select the background. Maybe I'll turn her off for right now, just so I can focus on this background layer. And this time I'm going to use the accent lighting. And I'll drag that on. And just like before, I've got one fill light. Um, you know, this is kind of the ambient light or the overall light. If I drag this down and go to the accent lighting and open that up, you can go to the cone angle and make the cone angle a lot bigger. And so this is kind of the overall of the image. I'm going to put it, keep it right in the middle and maybe take the intensity up, right? Right about there. That should do it. And now I also want to add a Kukuloris or a cookie. So I'll click and drag that on. And you can see the cookies, you can move it around. If I take the blur all the way down, then you can see it's just a, you know, basically a still image with an alpha channel. And I can scale it here as well. Now this scale works, you know, a lot faster than the on-screen control. In fact, they kind of work together. You can kind of fine tune it to fit your needs here. And under blob, I can change it to blinds, two, three, you know, what have you. But if I choose custom, then you can see the drop zone here. And that drop zone is how you use these other ones. So I can just click on it and you can see the shadow over there. Um, you know, maybe I want these blinds up here. Let's try blinds one. And yeah, that's kind of cool. Maybe blinds one B. Here we go. So I'll just apply the clip and I'll go back to the clip here and I'll go to rotation and I'll open up the rotation here and I can make the uh, shadow you know seem like it fits against the wall a little better so uh, maybe I'll just put it right there and I'll take the blur up so we can blur the shadow out 
Not too much blur though. Um, and maybe scale it up. Yeah, there we go. Now, uh, one thing I also want to do is have it kind of fade, you know, into the light because the shadow is not going to be on this light right here. Let's just say. So under the Kukuloris, if I click this little button here, it adds a shape mask. And with the shape mask, I'll take this little white uh, circle here and I'll drag it out. And then I can move it up. And then this outer edge is the feather of it, so I can see how far it's feathering out. So this is kind of cool. I'll go to rotation maybe and rotate it so it's more of a an edge of whatever the window might be casting. And then I'll turn uh, our talent back on and she's a little washed out. So I'll go back to command six and take the brights down a little bit. Maybe the midtones. And then add some saturation to give her some you know, really cool look here. And now that's cool. I've got the composite. Well, I can tweak until I'm really, really happy with it, of course. You know, who has ever finished with their work? <laughs> uh, oh, one thing I forgot to do is back in the Kukuloris here. I'll go back into the uh, Kukuloris. I forgot to change the opacity, so I'll just take the opacity down. Now you can see the difference that that makes. Um, other than opacity, though, you can change the blend mode, and you can play with the, you know, many different blend modes in here, um, just to see how it works, and especially with the um, the white ones. Uh, play with those blend modes and see what they look like. Really cool stuff here. Now, um, the next thing I want to do is, as she's talking, I want to just kind of crop into her a little bit. So I'll go to the titles, and in the adjustment layer, I'll just drag that on top. And here's a quick little tip for you. Let me delete that. I want the adjustment layer to be the length of this clip, so I'll select the clip and hit the letter X, and it marks the in and out spot. And then I'll select the adjustment layer and just hit Q, and it's telling it to fill the length of the clip that I had selected. Um, now this adjustment layer, I'm going to I'm going to, you know, I can add a color correction, Command 6, and I can do an overall. So see how it's adjusting the overall image, you know, to maybe get the really cool look I'm looking for here. Maybe bring the blacks up just a little bit like that. And the saturation, or what have you. Now, I could also hold on the Option key and click and drag up. And now you can see that it's multiplying the two color corrections together. And that's why it looks so flat. So on this top uh, adjustment layer, I'm going to go to the video tab and take that color correction off. I don't need that color correction for what I'm about to do. So right about here, I'll hit option left bracket and it cuts it, cuts the beginning of the clip to that playhead. And then I'll do the back with the option right bracket. So option left bracket and right bracket. Um, trim it up for you, the top and tail basically. So on this one I'm going to resize it. I'll just kind of zoom in a little bit here. Maybe fit it in the monitor there. And and she looks really awful the way I color corrected it, but I'm just doing it quickly to show you. So um, as we play it, the adjustment layer cuts and then cuts away. So that means that I can move the cut over here and hold down Option and drag. And so I can cut you know, in and out many times. Um, and the color correction of this is just bugging me so much. I'll go back to this one, hit Command-6, and maybe I'll just delete it. Yeah, there we go. And then maybe back to the clip, uh, this first light bulb, like the intensity, or what have you. Maybe drag it down a little bit. You know, whatever you want to do. In fact, I can... Um, add a little bit of orange, right, or yellow, just to kind of offset her skin tone a little bit. So that looks pretty cool. So that's just one way and some ideas of how you can composite your shots using lights and shadows. Oh, um, I didn't blur the background. I forgot about the Gaussian blur. So I'll select the background here 
and I'll just go to the filters under blur and there's Gaussian blur and I'll just drag that on to the background clip it really really makes it blurry so I wanna um, let me close the kookalores here and I'll open up the Gaussian and take the amount down and just I just want to soften it up just a little bit and maybe even the um, kookalores here I'll take the opacity down just a hair so we have you know a little bit uh, actually maybe blur it out a little bit more too so now it's just this nice soft little shadow in the background and she's got a light source on her shoulders and her face and I'm pretty happy with it I might fool with the color a little bit more but you kind of get the idea so if you want to learn more be sure to subscribe to the edit room and I'll see you next time I'm John Ballou.